Well, as you can see, it's a bit darker in here now. Now, I did think the roof was going to be finished yesterday. However, I ran out of panels. Would you believe it? I ran out of panels. I thought I was going to have enough. These are the ones that I was using. They're about six foot tall by about two and a half or three foot wide. But as you can see, I've got that one and half a one left. Now, when I worked it out for uh, how many more panels I needed, I was short by about maybe six, six or seven. I think it was six or seven that I needed. So I had a quick look online. There was none available on Marketplace in the local area, none that were budget friendly anyway. And it was just none available on eBay or online or anything like that. I even checked the manufacturers of the shed because those panels there that you're looking at, that you were looking at, come from the shed that's behind the garage. Now this, when I bought it, because obviously I bought this second hand, now when I bought it, originally it was a 12 foot by 24 foot shed. The person I bought it off had only used it as a 12 by 21 foot shed. And when I got it, I used it as a 12 by 18 foot shed. So the panels that were left over, I just had lying around in the shed itself for storage because I didn't know what to do with them. I didn't want to get rid of them because I thought they might come in handy one day. I mean, they've covered pretty much the majority of the garage all the way along until I ran out of panels. Now, while I was trying to find some panels online, I did find a person on Marketplace that was selling a complete shed, brand new, still in its box, never being used, no longer required. Measured it up, it was a 10 by 6, no it wasn't, it was a 6 by 4 shed. Now the shed itself wasn't going to be big enough to give me enough panels. However, what he did have on his advert was a link to the website that he bought the shed from so he could see what the original price was. When I went and had a look at the, at the website, they did packs of panels to replace any damage ones you might have. The only problem was they were a lot smaller, they were a completely different size. So I bought a pack. They come in uh, packs of 14, so I thought, well, if I need six or seven of the six foot panels, surely 14 four foot panels would work just as well. I just, I've got more of them, I can use more of them, so that may solve the problem. However, when they turned up, they're uh, there. Now, that particular panel, if I can get it all in the screen, is four foot by a foot and a half. So, but as I had them, I thought I'd use them anyway, and I've used some of them, and they're all right, actually. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. They filled in most of the holes. Now, yes, granted, they're a slightly different design to the bigger ones that I have, and they're a slightly different colour inside, which doesn't matter because it's a roof panel. And on the outside, obviously, they're, uh, they're black or anthracite, as it states. But that bit's going to be on the outside of the roof. So it doesn't matter. What I've got left to do, and I'm hoping to get that done today, now all the panels are here, is fill in these gaps here. So there's a couple of gaps left to fill. That one's a particularly awkward one because where you see there, it also extends beyond that noggin that you can't really see. So you have a flash of daylight there. So there's a panel to go over that. So I'll use that half panel to fill that hole and hopefully that's going to come across to fill that gap in. And then I've got two of these left. So I'm assuming one will go there I want to go for half of that one and then hopefully that one will fill that gap there and with any luck it'll give us enough left over so I can try and do something with that line of daylight you can see because at the minute nothing's screwed down to that lintel in the corner and I need to cover that but that's the idea so I'll get the ladders out I'll get up on the roof right well here's a view you don't see very often look at that all the panels are on. I had to cut that bit there. Obviously because we've got the cut out. That's the cable going into the house. Doesn't look that bad with the black bits on, does it? Or anthracite as they call it. I had to use half the patch, or half the length of the other panel that was left. And typically I need to finish that bit and I need to finish some bits along there. And the batteries have gone flat on the drill. Typical. So I'm going to have to go in, charge the batteries up, come back out, and get that bit of the front finished. Now, as you can see, it's looking much darker in here now. There's still some light showing, but other than that, it's pretty much finished in here. There's no power to the lights. I did try that before. Turned the light switches on. <laughs> Wasn't happy like there was a big bang and a flash of light from the fuse box. <laughs> Sadly, I didn't get that on camera. Bit of a shame, because that would have gone down well. But no, at the minute, there's no power. There's power at the socket, so I have got power. I can use power tools in here, but at the minute, I can only work in here during daylight. And even then, obviously, it's a bit shady. 
and of course there's gaps you can see holes appearing where the panels didn't quite match where the holes weren't drilled right or and misplaced the panels but other than that having a critical round sister joint there there's another big sister joint up here now look at this the gaps over there to fill in obviously but other than that really really long bolt no idea why i left that that long anyway doesn't really matter does it now we've got a roof on so hopefully somewhere dry or a lot drier than it was just got to fill all the holes in seal all the gaps obviously you get that bit up in that corner done this bit along here done but i'll get that done as soon as the batteries have charged on the drill now the only bit of panel i've got left in order to try and fill everything in is that bit there which is about three foot long so three by two and a half foot something like that that little bit there and these two little off cuts here that came off the new panels to go on so hopefully those two there that one there and that one over there will give me enough to patch up the front up here and get all that taken care of it's the next day all the batteries got charged for the screwdriver and the, and the drill last night but it did take a bit longer than i thought it was going to so i left it until today now the panels that i had left over have actually folded over the edge of the roof at the front they go all the way along there and they're different colors but the colors don't matter now if i get some exterior paint and treat all this down here all in the same color but now the entire roof is finished mind you you do get a lovely view of all the cars and of course the damage to the roof on the charger now of course it's really dark in here in the minute as i said yesterday the power is not working as far as the lights are concerned especially that one there the socket still works so i can plug an extension in and uh, plug an electric light into that one for the moment but obviously through time i will get lights in along all of the the joists in the roof but this is what the garage looks like now that it's all done and the roof's on so we've got all the joists have been either repaired or replaced these are sister joints i think i mentioned that yesterday the other day uh, he did have previous owner when he built it where these bits of wood are on the top of the walls with the straps over them now he did have in there these uh, bits of breeze block now they were at some point cemented in but with the water and the moisture getting into them when the joists were rotten the cement's all rotted away and they've come loose so instead of trying to learn to cement in a quick space of time i just reconstructed them out of wood or whatever wood i had lying around and uh, i had to completely make a new corner in there and when i got over to this particular joist it did look as though it was going to be all right and then as i uncovered it obviously all the way along here was completely rotten uh, there was a bit over there where there was wood at the top and there was wood at the bottom but there was just a gap in the middle that you could put your fingers through so obviously that had to be taken care of wherever possible i've reinforced the sister joints with uh, with metal it is rusty but it's just surface rust and i'll clean it and paint it at some point and then put a sister joint in the worst part though was this bit along here now that bit up there you can see that's a lintel and a very long bolt that's a lintel that should have been there obviously it should all be in one piece and then there's all the extra bracing i had to build into that corner to hold it on now the reason that i've had to do that and actually build or create a lintel above the garage door to support the roof and support part of the garage door is because when he did it previous owner when he put that uh, garage door and the frame and everything up there all he had as a lintel was two bits of wall studding i think it was one inch by half an inch or something like that. he had two bits one there one on top of it and they, they weren't tied together they weren't screwed together at all they were just there and then nailed in to the corners uh, on each side and they were flopping everywhere so i've left those on because they were perfectly okay but what i've done is i've strengthened them and made them a bit thicker by putting more wood behind as you saw a couple of minutes ago all the way along and that's worked it's all nice and solid and then also on the garage door there now just above the top of that garage door there's like a box section frame that goes in and uh, helps hold the door in place when the door is closed that was just flopping in the wind so from outside i've drilled some holes up into the new lintel i made put some screws in there hold that in place hopefully that's going to work that's going to suffice 
and that's that's all going to hold everything in place for uh, well for the con considerable foreseeable future at least. Right then. So for those of you interested, uh, just in case you are interested, how much metal did I use? Well, I've got two strips of metal here left over. That's the last, well, almost the last of the six foot panels. And then I've got that bit left over. And I've got that bit left over. That's all that's left. Now the panels that went in, as I was saying earlier, they are the spare panels or the remaining, the extra panels from the shed that's behind the garage over in that direction there behind where you're standing. Uh, I think it was two and a half per length, um, or was it three per length? I think we've got one, two, yeah, it was two and a half per length. Now they're about six foot, so I think the garage is about a 16 foot garage. Um, when I've done it, 16, yeah, I think it's about a 16 foot garage, so a lot of the panels had to be cut in half. I had to take four foot off them in order to finish the rest of the garage, uh, in order to make the panels complete. So I've used those. So they've all gone in. I think there's about 15, maybe 16 of the six foot panels that have gone in. Uh, the new panels that I had to buy, that I showed you earlier on in the video, they were only four foot high. I did buy 14 of those in a pack. Uh, I have used all 14 of those. There's none on the left. There's not even a scrap left. Uh, when there was some left, I cut it up into strips so I could use it at the front of the garage to help fold over the side of the wood and hold it. The one at the back, I've still got some at the back to fold over and screw the framework that I put in the back and that'll just make the water so the water doesn't soak in the joists. It'll actually run off the sides and then of course when it's all painted outside, uh, that'll protect it a little bit more as well. So, what did I use? What materials did I use in order to build all of this and get it all in place? Well, and, and where did it all come from? Now, all the hardware, um, the screws, the brackets, the washers, those spiky washer things that go between these uh, these sister joints to hold the wood together and, and stop it moving. Everything that I bought like that, all the hardware, all came from screw fix. Uh, so they all came there. God knows how many screws have gone into this. As far as the wood's concerned, a lot of the wood that I've used is bits of wood I had lying around, uh, scrap wood I've had lying around that I've used for other things in the past and then just had in storage in the shed. And uh, it's just been sitting there, so I, I used that. I did have some wood donated. Uh, there was a couple of people. One of my viewers and subscribers brought me a whole load of wood that he'd found left over after he'd had some work done in the area where he is. Uh, so I got that as well. That helped. Um, another viewer and a friend and a subscriber, they were getting rid of some remains of some old shed or whatever in the garden. So some of the wood from that came to me as well because I'd give them a hand getting rid of it, taking the, the rotten stuff to the tip and whatever was left over that was good enough to use. I acquired that or I just kept that and uh, I brought it back here and I used that um, and like I say that's all the new panels came from um, the new roof panels they came from a German website whose name I couldn't possibly even begin to pronounce but they came from there and the rest of the roof panels as you know I already had from the shed in the background. Now I've used three different sizes of screws there was um, 50 millimeter, 75 millimeter and 100 millimeter screws depending what I was using and where they were going. Uh, I think there must be, in total, there has to be maybe 800 screws that I've gone through in order to bolt and screw everything together. Uh, obviously, each panel that went on, each steel panel was 12 screws. And you can see from being up on the, the roof of the garage how many panels is on there. So the screws were followed up quite quickly. Um, what did it cost? Now, I did have to buy some wood, mainly this bit here, these bits. Now, I did buy five lengths of that from a local timber merchant, and that came, I think it was 20 foot, 15 foot, 20 foot each when I bought them. I got five of those. From memory, they were about 50 quid. I know, so cheap, unbelievable. Don't go to a, a, a sort of a, a DIY supermarket or DIY hypermarket if you want wood. Go to a proper timber yard. Dirt cheap, lovely people, fantastic service, especially the one up here. That I was using. So I did buy some new wood, I had to, in order to get the, the length that I needed for the joists. But I think all in, with all of the hardware I had to buy, all the wood that I did buy, and the new panels that I had to buy, I think, from memory, it's going to be less than 300 quid. I've got in the roof of the garage a lot of time, but that's neither here nor there. 
but less than 300 quid um i've got in the garage i'll put up here what that is in dollars for you guys that are watching over there in the usa uh but definitely less than 300 pound i've got in the roof so far uh, and i have to say i'm really chuffed i'm really really happy with the fact that it's done even more so with the fact that it's done because it's not something i've ever done before it's not something i'm interested in before i have no knowledge of doing it i haven't read any books on doing it looked at a whole load of youtube videos where other people have done things and professionals have been doing it uh i'm i'm not a professional i wouldn't even say i'm good enough to be an amateur at doing stuff like this but i'm overjoyed with the way it's come out i really am and more so because i did it all on my own but of course i did have some help i did have one person help one of my mates dave you know who you are you're probably watching this um dave gave me a hand because the original panels that were on the roof they're 18 foot long 16 or 18 foot long uh the box section steel and they're quite thick they're about two three millimeters thick and because of the length and the width of them they weigh a ton when you're trying to move them on your own and with them all being in one piece right across the garage it wasn't as simple as sort of loosening one and pulling it off the side of the garage roof it took two people uh, one either side of the garage and one in and somebody inside now and then you know would swap places between outside the garage inside the garage hitting the panel to loosen it and then slide it off and lie it down in the garden so i've still got all of those don't know what i'm going to use those for they'll come in handy for something but they're definitely not going back on the roof here because when they blow off the thickness that they are and how sharp they are in the corners if they had blown off and actually hit somebody there would have been a whole load of bother whereas these ones if one of these blows off and hits somebody it'll just fall in half and fall on the ground so i feel a lot better having this like this the way it is now but as i say uh one of my mates did give me a hand outside of that though i've done everything else myself uh yes it's taken a while it's taken a lot longer than i thought it would have done yes it would have been easier and quicker to get professionals to do it but i don't have the budget to get professionals to do it um seeing some of the stuff on youtube when uh, when other professionals are doing it uh it's amazing to see how quick it goes up so yes it would have been a lot quicker um i suspect it would have been a lot more awkward because they would have wanted everything done correctly so maybe they would have had to do some work to the tops of the walls as well which would have added expense to that now a couple of people did say if they were me they would just knock the whole thing down and start again from scratch now yes i understand that and yes i would have loved to however if i had knocked this whole thing down flattened it and started again from scratch i would have wanted it a lot bigger than it is now i would have not knocked the shed down behind it i would have wanted the entire garage to go the full length of the garden and i would have wanted to go out sideways in the garden as well i've got plenty of space to do that so it's not an issue doing it and because of the the size of the plot that my house sits on i wouldn't be going against building regulations to get the size that i, I would like it to be but of course a garage that size comes with a price reflecting garage that size i did look into the possibility of flattening this and getting rid of everything and just putting up a wooden shed uh, like a wooden garage or a metal garage and even both of those um were way beyond the budget that i have access to at the minute unfortunately um it just wouldn't work i do have a friend who did have a garage built a single garage built from concrete one of those prefab panel garages and man that was i think that was eight eight nine grand something like that um it's, it's just unbelievable so for me by far and away the easiest the, the cheapest way of doing it definitely was to just get up there repair what i could repair replace what i had to and fix it all myself and at least it's now all done in fact i have to say i'm so pleased i'm so happy that it's over and i'm so proud of what i've managed to achieve all on my own minus the help of getting the old panels off you just have to do some form of happy dance don't you so yeah i'm actually over the moon really truly over the moon it's all done now i can get into tidying all this mess up i can get lights in and most of all i can get back outside onto the cars now one of me viewers come subscribers did mention to us the last time i saw them because one of my local viewers local subscribers did mention to us that there seems to be a running theme throughout all of my videos and that running theme would appear to be the mention of coffee now i haven't mentioned coffee so far in this video not deliberately because he's watching and i didn't want him to think 
there he is again on about his coffee. No, what I thought I would do, because he's right, most videos end with me going for a coffee, which I am about to do in a couple of minutes, but most videos when they end with me wanting a coffee, and him mentioning the fact that he's noticed the running theme of everything having to revolve around a cup of coffee. So what I've done, I've set up a buy me a coffee. Now, details of that are in, a, in the description below. Uh, if you feel the need to buy me a coffee and, uh, and keep my thirst quenched on days like this, so I can carry on and get work like this done and get back into the cars and get those on the road and start enjoying them and having some fun with the cars, now the hard work he has done, then feel free. There's a link to it in the description. I do need to do a lot of tidying up in here. Have a look at this. I need to find somewhere to put all this lot. Plus, obviously, do a video on this little bit here that's been hiding here for an awfully long time. But I need to do a video on that. However, before that comes, a long time before that comes, I've got all this to tidy up and sort out. Oh, incidentally, if you want a set of wheels for a four stud Ford, four, uh, four by 108, they are Wolf Race wheels, Wolf Race five spokes. If you want a set of wheel, a set of wheels, there's four of them here. I do have five. I have a complete full set. Uh, drop us an email at double zero garage at gmail.com or put a comment in the details below and we'll see if we can work a deal out on those because these are surplus to requirements. I don't need them. haven't got the space for them. They need to go. But I need to find out space to put all of these. And of course, I need to dispose of this, the remains of the original roof that was on the garage. Now that's all got to go and that's a big pile to go. I might have a bonfire. Hmm. Anyway, if you're just new here and this is the first time you've watched anything to do with the garage and you've missed all the all the earlier ones, I'll leave a link up here in the corner to the playlist. For now though, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, press the like button on the way out and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.